Hey, what's up? John Sonmez here, and I got a book review for you today. This one's a bit of an unusual book, not my typical book, not something that I had put on my list to read, but I got this as a gift, and I thought, heck, you know, this actually looks pretty cool, so I should read this and see what this book is about. And so this book is called Philosophy and Illustrated History of Thought by Tom Jackson, you can check it out here. And it's really interesting, it's actually a pretty, pretty cool book. As you probably know, if you've been subscribed to this channel, I'm interested in philosophy. In fact, you know, you might even say that this channel is basically a philosophical channel, as I'm basically extolling my life philosophy and exploring different philosophies and evolving my own philosophy throughout life as I as I go through life and share it with you guys on this channel. So I've definitely been interested in philosophy for, for quite some time. And this is one of those topics where I've always sort of wondered, you know, what, you know, I guess like, what is the timeline, right? Because you hear about different philosophers, you read about different philosophers, you know, from Socrates to Plato, Aristotle, uh, you know, Nietzsche and, uh, you know, a lot of the other famous, you know, John Locke, Immanuel Kant, uh, you know, all of these, all these philosophers. And sometimes it's hard to place them in a timeline and kind of the evolution of thought. So I thought this was kind of cool. This book actually went through a, a huge number of f philosophers and, and a bunch of different ideas. It, it's more idea focused. There's also like a timeline in here, like this little pull out map that shows the timeline of philosophy, which I thought was really cool. Some of the things, you know, it's, it's graphical, so it's kind of cool to have the illustrations and whatnot. And yeah, you know, I, I think, you know, overall, it, it seems like it was pieced together by by someone who like took a lot of information from a lot of different places rather than someone who really was a um, in-depth student of philosophy right or, or professor which you know that that doesn't necessarily make it bad but it doesn't have as much in-depth knowledge it feels like maybe some of the information was outsourced and and gathered from from a few different places and so it's not as interwoven right and it's not as deep but you know in a, in a short book like this that covers so much philosophy it, it can't really be that deep but with that said uh, i definitely still recommend it like i said it it goes historically through a lot of the really big philosophical ideas and even up to present time, or pretty close to present time, a lot of these things, you know, just if you nothing really like I'd say from a from a wisdom perspective that you're going to get from here that you're like, oh, wow, this is earth shattering or mind blowing. Or I'm glad I read this book. I really took a lot away from this book. But more if you're curious about the ideas and the timelines and all that. And I always like to get that that picture. So kind of the way I like to study things including geography and history and whatnot is not from a sequential perspective, but getting a lot of the information first and, and finding the things that I'm interested in and then putting it together on the map or putting it together on a timeline historically and then understanding the relations between those. Because a lot of times if you just like look at things sequentially, it's harder, right? So if you're to study philosophy and you just said, okay, I'm going to study philosophy and you started maybe with this book or started with a book that went through the history of philosophy, you know, step by step from philosopher to philo philosopher, you wouldn't know what's important and it wouldn't have a lot of interest to you because it wouldn't be personalized to you. You wouldn't really care about that information. But if you, you know, studied some philosophical concepts or read different philosophers and, you know, like stoicism, right? That was one of the big things that really really got me into philosophy or even from a historical perspective studied different figures in history or, or different historical events and whatnot right or from a cultural perspective studied different countries or traveled to different countries right and then after you gain that knowledge and you got that sort of I want to say motivation but enthusiasm for the subject matter then going back and plotting it on a globe, I've got my globe here, or plotting it on a timeline, right? Or, you know, going back and learning the histories and the biographies of different people and the sequence of thoughts, then it's a lot more interesting and it sticks a lot more. This is one of those things I talk about, about how to learn things quickly and how, how we learn best is if we have some kind of interest ahead of time and then we try to piece together things because then we know what's important. So 
you know, sidetracked a little bit here, but pretty good book. Like I said, you know, not not a phenomenal book, not a, not a stellar book, not not one that I would have you know come across on my own. But because it was given to me as a gift, and I was interested, I, I thought it was worth it. You know, I definitely thought it was worth the read, and I learned a lot. I feel like I'm I'm getting more of the pieces of the sequence of things uh, as far as philosophy and philosophical ideas and some of the bigger names. So I've got some probably, the biggest thing I think I'll, I'll get from this book will be some places that I want to go and some philosophers that I'll want to read some more based on this kind of introduction to their ideas and their topics, which is always good, right? Again, you know, I, I would stress to you that there's so much information, there's so many books out there, there's so much knowledge out there that uh, it's always good to get an overview, like a survey course, to like look at you know an overview of great literature, an overview of history, an overview of philosophers, an overview of whatever the concept is, and and then to zoom in where you want to, right? Because you can't read all the great literature in history. You can't read all the works of all the great philosophers in history. You can't read all the history of the world, right? You have to pick certain pieces that appeal to you, but you don't know. If you just start picking up books, if you start picking up random writings and, and whatnot, you're gonna be, it's gonna be a scattershot approach. But if you can find things that condense information and give you summaries, then you can go and you can drill in and you can find the information that you want. And that's what I, I generally do a lot of times because like I said, as, as interested I, as I am in philosophy, I can't read every single great philosopher's works. I just can't. There's there's no way that I could do that. But I can pick certain ones, right? There's certain philosophers like Spinoza that I, that really appeal to me, right? There's certain philosophers like uh, Nietzsche, right? Frederick Nietzsche. He he also appeals to me, right? So the, those things I learned about because I. I learned about kind of the broad uh, summary of, of philosophers and their work. Stoicism, again, another one where, where it appeals to me a lot. So I'm picking and choosing, but I, I need that kind of overview. So this is another good book, like I said, that gives you that overview of philosophy. And I've talked way too much about this book. All right, if you haven't subscribed already, click that subscribe button below and click the bell so you don't miss any videos. I'll talk to you next time. Take care.